There is a definite character arc that Indiana Jones travels throughout the years. While many have said that during the films that Indy is irrelevant to the plot of each of them and his character does not grow. This really is not the case. Many of us were first introduced to Indiana Jones in the summer of 1981. 40 years ago, and we all fell for the character in the leather jacket, tall fedora, whip-cracking mayhem that ensued in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's start with the films. In The Last Crusade, we begin the film with a 13-year-old Indiana Jones heading into a cave, finding the treasure hunters, stealing the cross of Coronado from said treasure hunters, and trying to get the cross to a museum, with no help from his dad father. At this point, we begin to see Indiana change from an altruistic Boy Scout to an obsessive treasure hunter, adventurer, and eventually into a professor of archaeology. While a notable archaeologist, as Bill Ock says, and Chatter Lau indicate, there is a darker side to Dr. Jones's character. We find Indiana Jones a year before the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark, sitting down with Shanghai gangster Lao Che. A man who rose from a petty crook and Lone Shark to become one of the city's most prominent criminals by leveraging his keen intelligence and ruthlessness to make a fortune in opium and white slavery. Now Lau owned both legal and illicit businesses as a criminal entrepreneur, including pharmaceuticals and export companies and various bars and nightclubs including the Lotus Eaters. His nightclub, Club Obi-Wan, served as a front and base of operations for his criminal activities and was frequented by many of Shanghai's most prominent citizens, providing lavish entertainment, fine food, and for those who desired it, a discreet, seemingly safe venue for indulging in darker pleasures such as gambling and prostitution. Now, Chan and Cao Khan, his sons, also served as chief lieutenants in his criminal empire, albeit Khan was the favorite and Chen was frequently neglected. Hi, I'm Rob, and this is A Constantly Racing Mind, and today we are looking at the Erna Norache and Indiana Jones's motivation to trade the remains of, of the founder of the Qing Dynasty and Manchu language for a diamond. The Chinese dynasties go all the way back to the Neolithic times. However, our scholars generally agree that the Imperial Dynasty started around 220 BCE. However, near the end of the 16th century and the early days of the 17th century AD, China saw a transitionary period between the Ming and Qing dynasties. Emperor Norachi is noted for his reorganized and united diverse Jurchen uh, tribes, later known as the Manchus, strengthened the Eight Banners military structure and finally launched invasions against the Ming and Joseon dynasties of China and Korea. Now his conquest for the Ming dynasties, northern Liaodong, uh, region created the framework for his heirs who founded the Qing dynasty in 1636 to conquer the remainder of China. Now by the way, if this is the first time visiting us, we cover the film genres of sci-fi, horror, action adventure, prop culture, and all things geek. So if you want more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be aware of my new videos. So on April 8, 1559, Nurachi was born. He claimed descent from uh, Mentemu, a Jurchen headman who lived two centuries prior as the member of the, I'm going to butcher it, Gioro clan of the Sakushi River tribe. Now, the young man spent his childhood as a soldier in the home of Ming Dynasty commander Lai Chenglang of Fushan, where he learned, I'm not even going to say it, the court's official language. Nanachi learned everything he knew about Chinese military and political techniques from the Chinese novels. Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and Water Margin. Now, when he formally seized the throne as the Khan of the, of the latter Jin dynasty in 1612, he dubbed his clan Ayasin Jioro. Narachi's father, Taxi, and grandfather, Jio Changa, were killed in an attack on Gure, now a village in uh, Zinbin, Manchu, Atatamans County, led by Lai Cheng Liang in 1582, a Jurchen chieftain. Now, Naik and Weilin, which means Secretary of Han Chinese in the Jurchen language, thus his existence is considered suspect by some historians, Narachi began to unite the Jurchen bands in his territory the next year. Narachi assaulted Naik and Weilin in Turun, now a town in uh, Zinbin in 1584, when he was 25 to revenge the deaths of his father and grandparents who were claimed to have left him nothing except 13 suits of armor. Narachi invaded Irhun 
again in 1587 and Nikan Whalen retreated to Erhun. However, Narachi gradually increased his strength over the years with Lai's help. This time Nikan Whalen fled to Lai Cheng Lang's domain. Lai offered Nikan Whalen to Narachi to create a connection and Narachi promptly decapitated Nikan Whalen. And in 1593, the Yehi assembled a coalition of nine tribes to fight the Jinsu Jurchens, which also included the Mongols and eight other tribes. But as the Battle of Gure, the alliance was beaten and Norachi triumphed. Now, Norachi waged war against the four Hulun tribes from 1599 to 1618. It's a long time, honestly. Which Norachi came out undefeated. And in 1599, Norachi tasked two translators to alter the Mongolian script to create a Manchu alphabet. The Mongols granted him the title of Kundulun Khan in 1606. Now, Narachi established the Jin dynasty, or Ayazan Gurun, in 1616, generally referred to as the later Jin, because of the legacy of the previous Jurchen, Jin dynasty of the 12th century. At Murkden, he built a palace which is in present day Shenyang, Liaoning province. Now, after he died in 1626, his son Hong Taj changed the, the latter Jin to Qing, and Narachi is still considered the founder of the Qing dynasty. Now, the politically astute Narachi sought to emphasize distinctions or similarities in lifestyles with other peoples like the Mongols. The language of the Chinese and the Koreans are different, but their clothing and the way of life are the same. It's not the same as the Manchus, Jurchen, and the Mongols. Our language are different, but our clothing and the ways of life are the same. So I want to take a moment and thank all of you who have liked and shared my videos. Subscribe to the channel and in general support it that way. You can also lend your support via Patreon and or buy me a coffee. So thank you. So Lao Che seems to desire to liken his criminal organization to the formation of the Qin Dynasty, like other despots who have tried to associate their rule with leaders from the past. You know, the Third Reich and the Rome and, you know, the Roman Empire, and more recently Hugo Chavez from Venezuela and Simon Bolivar. Okay, but why would Indiana Jones want to trade the ashes of the emperor for a diamond? Now the answer to that comes to us from two places. Now back to the Last Crusade where our opening scene sees a young Indy lose the cross of Coronado to the man in the Panama hat. Then years later he takes back the cross from the Panama hat man in a fiery shipwreck at sea. Now obsession the Joneses are obsessed people. You can look at this video right over here where we discuss a bit of that reason. And that is where Belgian Army Captain Henry Jones Jr. and Lieutenant Remy Baudouin confiscated a map from a British Army Corporal who died in the last minutes of World War I. Now legend has it that Alexander the Great had this diamond mounted alongside a second as the eyes of a large solid gold peacock statue. Now one diamond was sold to an Indian emperor who saw it cut apart, but the other was stolen and believed lost to history. And it was later rediscovered by the British colonel who apparently found the diamond in an ancient temple while serving in India during the 1810s. Now the temple monks captured him and they held the officer prisoner. He was able to get a map to his son, which a century later ended up in the hands of a British army. After the war, Indy and Remy returned to Belgium, met with Remy's family, and they embarked on finding the diamond. Now, Jones felt that the quest was a waste of time after meeting anthropologist Bronislaw Malinowski in the South Pacific and returned home to study archaeology at the University of Chicago. On the other hand, Baudun opted to continue his search for the diamond and the two friends parted ways. Which leaves us sitting at a table with a notorious Lao Che. Searching around the internet for this item, only one item came up, and guess what? It's on Etsy. Now this item is from Dino Shop Nerd Stuff out of Wetter on the Ruhr River in Germany. And it took less than a month to arrive, so that is always a plus. Also, it's very well packaged, both the lid and the urn. Now the urn measures 6.1 inches or 15.5 centimeters in height and 4 inches uh, 
which is 10.16 centimeters wide and two inches in depth which is 7.8 centimeters. Now the lid seems to depict a mouse holding a flower in its mouth with a flower decorations on the bluish green and maroon resin. A very, very nice piece. Now I wonder if my ashes could be interned in it when I die or is this not biologically safe? Now here is the peacock diamond. You can see a video on this item and a link for it will be on this description. Now the map dimensions are about 11.5 inches by 16.25 inches, which works out to about 29.7 by 42 centimeters, and it's printed on like a 60 pound cardstock. Now this map is from another Etsy seller, FP Replica, and they are out of France. And I'll leave a link in the description. And I hope you check out these and other great stores on Etsy. Now the map has Greek writing on it and a depiction of the temple on it. Indy and Remy find their way to Alexandria, Egypt, then off to Singapore and eventually find themselves on an island in the South Sea, where Indy comes to the conclusion that he needs more education and that the diamond at this point is not what he needs in his life, and he and his friend part ways. Now, in the Temple of Dune, Indy is a mercenary at the beginning of the film, and he and Short Round are in search of fortune and glory. But however, by the end of the film, uh, the Shankara Stones, while valuable from both a fortune and glory aspect, Indiana Jones decides to return the stones to a small village in India. Now, he knows not only that the stones are magical and potentially very powerful and worth much, he forsakes all that as he knows that to the villagers, the stones are sacred. And while he still goes on searching for rare and potentially valuable artifacts, I think this adventure prepares the weary, this weary soul for his later adventures and the realization that the people in his life are the most important things to him. Both of these items are great finds. So what Indiana Jones props do you have? I would love to see them. You can always share on the channel's Facebook page. Thank you for watching. I can share the video and watch this video right over here for more Indiana Jones props and cosplay or any of the other videos for all the other movie prop videos. Take care.